Okay, um, if you don't have a question, I can go ahead and read from my free Answer Tips ebook. Or if you have a question, please go ahead and ask. Okay, uh, so uh, let's uh, start with uh, tip number maybe tip number fifty. So this is a free ebook. Uh, you can get it. Uh, there's a link at the top uh, where it says free arts ebook. You can download it there. Okay, uh, tip fifty. Read uh, for speaking. Read previous arts exam questions. So uh, try to go through previous uh, speaking exam questions and. To learn about those, uh, tip 51 for speaking, uh, record yourself. Uh, so you can record yourself and uh, then um, try to hear, try to listen to how you sound, and that can help uh, to improve. Uh, tip number 52 um, the speaking exam is quite short, so it'll be about 11 to 10 minutes, uh, sorry, 11 to 14 minutes. So uh, try to be concentrated and focused. Okay, uh, hi everyone. If you have a question, please go ahead and ask. Uh, this is Philip from England, a long-term uh, native IELTS teacher. I first started teaching the IELTS about eight years ago. Um, I started teaching online about ten years ago. I've taught grammar a lot, uh, or quite a lot. So, if you have any questions about English or IELTS, uh, please go ahead. I am a IELTS specialist. I guess you could say that's basically the main thing I teach. Uh, tip number fifty-three. For speaking, uh, this is from my free e arts ebook. So, if anybody would like to uh, download it, uh, you can get it from the uh, link at the top uh, where it says free IELTS tips ebook. Go ahead and download it. Uh, tip number 60, uh, 53 uh, speak about easy topics. So, basically, if you know about football vocabulary, uh, don't go ahead and speak about something which may be more interesting, like scuba diving or skydiving or anything like that where you don't know the vocabulary for example okay uh, tip number 40 54 uh, for, for my free arts ebook uh, try to speak in English as much as possible so maybe with your colleagues at work or with your friends or your family if they're not going to find it irritating or something uh, you could try speaking in English um, Tip number 55, uh, in the exam, don't speak in another language. You know, it may be easy to write, uh, sorry, easy to speak in, you know, uh, Arabic, say, Arabic people say, yane, yane, when they're thinking. But of course, don't do that in an English exam. It will be an error. Um, I can only assume the examiners wouldn't like it or most likely give an error. Um, I'm assuming I'm not an examiner, but I'm assuming that would be fairly logical. Uh, who knows? Okay. Anyway, I definitely don't do it. If possible, uh, fifty-six. Um, uh, so uh, try. Uh, yes, there are a lot of. Uh, anyway, I'd say probably about a hundred percent. That's the that's the case. But I would need to maybe refer to that. I'm not an answer exam. Anyway, uh, tip number fifty-six. Uh, there are some free speaking topics on my website. So this is tip number fifty-six from my free uh, ebook. So do check it out, and you can download it for free. Uh, the link. I'll just put the link. Uh, in the uh, chat window uh, here, so go ahead and you can download it. And um, uh, tip number fifty-seven for speaking speed: try not to speak super fast. Um, so maybe you know just try and speak at a normal speed. Uh, there are no prizes, you know, for speaking extra fast. Basically, uh, uh, most likely, if you speak very fast, probably there are going to be uh, many uh, more errors. It may not sound so natural. So just uh, even for native speakers, you know, if I I'm a native speaker from England, I was born and went to school in England. For the exam, I wouldn't try and speak very fast to get a high grade. It's just unnatural. Um, the examiner find it pretty quite unusual. Um, so I wouldn't recommend it. Okay. Uh, tip number fifty-eight. Uh, study the speaking grading criteria. Um, this is tip number 58 from my free ebook. You can go there, and there's a link to um, find out about the grading criteria and the methods they use. They use fluency and coherence, uh, uh, a flexical resource, meaning vocabulary, grammatical range, and accuracy, um, and uh, meaning variety and accuracy, etc. 
And then pronunciation. How do you actually sound? Um, okay. Um, right. Uh, tip number 59 for speaking uh study your errors so if you're making errors then obviously be aware of that if you can get corrected by a you know, native english teacher it'll be best and then uh, uh see your errors and then try and repeat them okay uh hi everyone it's uh Philip from england uh please go ahead if you have a question and i'm happy to answer i'm a long-term uk native science teacher i've uh I started teaching english uh, over 10 years ago and have been teaching uh, the ielts online uh, I started about eight years ago, so please do go ahead and ask a question if you have one. Uh, tip number 60, speaking task one preparation, look through the questions you're likely to have, what is your name, where are you from, blah, 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 and uh, what you can actually do is write down what you're going to say and then get a teacher to correct you. Um, however, don't memorize the answer. Uh, I think they, if they think you've memorized the answers, they will not probably like this. But just basically have an idea and uh, check your grammar at least. Um, although, most likely, if it, if it looks like you memorized it, I'm not sure that would go down. Certainly for the writing, uh, they um, would uh, mark you down. And uh, uh, anyway, so basically, make it look natural, try not to um, do that. And it may well be for the uh, speaking, I would just need to r remind myself or check that. Anyway, uh, speaking of uh, task two, for task two, make bullet points so that um, try to make about 15 bullet points so that um, you can um, then speak one bullet point for one to two sentences or half a sentence or one you know whatever and this can help with fluency for the speaking test too a lot of people say they don't or some students may say they don't know what to speak about so if you're trying to think about what to speak about and also trying to uh, focus on the english as well as a non-native speaker uh, this can be challenging, obviously. So make it easier for yourself, make bullet points, and then you can uh, try to be more fluent when you're speaking. Okay, uh, tip number 62. Understand the, for speaking, uh, understand the exam format so the uh, the exam format is uh, going to be um, a uh, task one, and um, which is introduction questions like "Hello, how are you? Where are you from?" etc. And then the uh, task two will be like a cue card. They'll give you a cue card, and you'll need to um, speak for one to two minutes, approximately for that. And then for the uh, third section, it's uh, meant, in theory, it's meant to be follow-up questions. So they will then ask you some questions uh, about the cue card uh, in connection. In theory, although having looked at example uh, questions on IELTS blog, I'm not sure that's always the case. Okay, uh, tip number 63 for speaking. Uh, make sure that you understand the question. Uh, obviously, you know, if you don't understand the question, you may then just be answering on a different topic. And obviously, you don't want to do that. Um, so you could say something like, could you please repeat the question? You know, you don't want to be speaking about something else. Okay, and if anyone has a question here, please go ahead and write. So I'm happy to answer. Um, a UK native speaker, I was born and went to school in England, and I've been teaching English online for uh, over 10 years. I started in January 2007, so I'm one of the longest online English teachers in the world. And my website is onlineenglishteacher.com if you're interested in paid uh, training. Uh, paid Skype classes, paid writing correction, e-courses, support forum. It's all there, and this is available. Check it out, onlineenglishteacher.com. Okay, uh, tip number 64. Uh, try to learn, uh, for speaking, try to learn some useful phrases so that uh, you can uh, get fluency when you're speaking. Uh, and, uh, yes, like that. Uh, tip number 65, vocabulary. Um, try to make your uh, vocabulary uh, reasonably complex, don't make it too basic. Uh, this would not be very good. Uh, tip number 66, uh, uh, speaking um, uh, for water, uh, try to bring in some water and you may not be able to bring it into the exam room uh, from what I've heard from students. However, 
Um, I've never taken actually the, the IELTS test myself, although I've studied, you know, I'm a native speaker, I've studied English at university at a high level, so it's much harder than the IELTS, most likely, what I got a uh, quite high grade also. Um, anyway, but uh, basically what I've heard is you can't bring water into the exam room, so, um, yes, yeah, so basically, um, okay, uh, you you uh, you can probably drink it, obviously, before, but uh, try and bring water, as my recommendation. Uh, number 67. Um, yes, yeah, so try to have advanced vocabulary, or oh, I may have made a mistake here, try to have advanced vocabulary for uh, starting sentences. So don't start a sentence with, uh, I think, you know, start with, uh, as far as I'm concerned, or looking forwards, or thinking back, you know, something like that. Uh, tip number 68. Uh, answer the question directly. So basically, you know, if they say speak about your favorite sport, you don't want to speak about your favorite food, right? Uh, they may think that's not very good, uh, most likely. I'm not an art examiner, but I think it's just basic logic. Uh, they may think you misunderstood it or something. Uh, tip number 69. Um, uh, this is going on to writing. Uh, so be careful of informal punctuation. You know, make sure your punctuation is formal for uh, writing, uh, not like you know SMS uh, uh, punctuation, right? Um, tip number seventy: corrections. Uh, make sure that you your corrections you kind of cross it out right above, or if you're using a pencil, erase it and then write over it. But try not to change a word. I don't think this looks very uh, professional. Uh, tip number 71, energy for writing. Uh, make sure you have enough energy for writing. Uh, you don't want to, uh, you know, it can be quite a high energy task, so you don't want to run out of energy, basically, uh, when you're in the middle of writing. Uh, tip number 72, writing. Find your weak areas. So basically, you need to identify, are you making a lot of grammar errors, are you making a lot of vocabulary spelling errors, or whatever and then focus on that. Uh, tip number 73, get used to writing by hand. You know, a lot of people, they, um, uh, they, they don't normally write with a pen or pencil, so get used to that, and that can help. Um, tip number 74, handwriting. Make sure your handwriting is clear. Uh, you don't want to have handwriting which is hard to read, so uh, make sure it is clear. Um, okay, uh, tip number 75. Um, try to use, you know, some complex vocabulary when you're writing. For example, don't write the word people. You could write the word individuals or don't, uh, I, I, generally avoid, I generally recommend people to avoid using the word people. It's a very basic word, very regular word. Uh, so you could write individuals or uh, something like that. Uh, tip number 60, 76, how can I increase my grade in half a day? Uh, so basically, you know, look, uh, go through your previous writing, identify the errors, the patterns you're making with an associate can be useful to see the uh, repetition, and uh, also um, look at multiple answers, and of course, uh, arts, uh, English uh, arts teacher can be useful for that. Uh, tip number 77, how, how many, my opinion, Expression should I use for writing not just two? Uh, normally, I put um, uh, one, uh, my opinion, uh, expression uh, for for that, um, which I, I think is uh, better uh, in the last paragraph normally. That's me personally, but again, there's no, um, there's no right or wrong uh, exactly. Uh, tip number 78, how many minutes for checking? Uh, I think the optimal would be something like 10 minutes for task 2 and then 5 minutes for task 1. Uh, that's what I'd do if I was taking the IELTS exam, but of course it may be difficult if you're not a native speaker. But try and do something like that and then you can really uh, check as much as possible. Uh, tip number 79, uh, how many paragraphs should I use? Uh, for the task 1 I normally reckon about 3 paragraphs and for the task 2 about 4 paragraphs. There's no right or wrong, you know, they don't say on the website, on the IELTS website, you must use three or must use four, um, but that's basically what I recommend. Um, I think it's a reasonable, a normal amount, basically. Uh, so, for example, uh, for the academic task one, um, you know, there, there'd be introduction uh, and then data and then analysis for the three, 
And I think for the letter, it's from what I can recall, it's normally uh, three three different questions. You know, you need to answer about. So you just do three different paragraphs. I'm not saying that's always going to be the way they do it, but that's just from what I remember what they normally do. And then for the task two, it could be introduction, uh, agree, disagree, conclusion, or introduction, positive, positive conclusion, or introduction, causes, uh, causes, solutions, conclusion, anything like that. Right. Um, okay. Uh, hi, everyone. Uh, just um, uh, just say uh, this is Philip from England. I'm a UK native speaker. I have been teaching English online for over started over ten years ago. My website is onlineenglishteacher.com. I have Skype classes, e courses, forum, email correction. So if if you're interested in any of that, uh, check it out. My email. I'll just put my email and uh, Skype ID is. Um, so my Skype ID is. IELTS online English teacher and my uh, email is info at online English teacher dot com. Um, there's also a free IELTS tips ebook. The link should be at the top of the data here, and I'll just put that here again if anyone wants to check it. Um, and uh, you can download that for free. You don't even need to enter your name or anything like that. Just enter the capture code, and it's free for anybody. Um, I think I need to update that a little bit, uh, but generally, most students seem to like it. Uh, tip number 80, writing. How many sentences should I use? Uh, for the task 2, I normally use four sentences for each paragraph, and for the task 1, about two to three sentences. Again, there's no rule, so if you want to use more, that's fine. Uh, tip number 81, how many statistics should I use for uh, academic writing task 1? Uh, normally, I recommend using six to eight statistics, approximately. You know, If you use a whole huge amount, uh, it may look a little bit unusual, I think. Uh, tip number 82, how to make ideas for the IELTS Task 2 essay. Um, well, I, I think they don't need to be you know, amazing ideas. So basically, it can just be something okay, but nothing, it doesn't have to be anything absolutely amazing. Uh, but just you know, interesting, relevant, um, I, th I think that is uh, going to be good. Uh, tip number 83, uh, IELTS writing band descriptors. Yes, check out these. Um, check out the grading system, can be very useful. Uh, uh, tip number 84, IELTS writing checking. Yes, so very important to check, as I said before. Um, tip number 85, IELTS writing uh, sentence length. I only recommend making about 15 to 25 uh, words per sentence. Uh, try not to make it super long, because if you make it uh, super long uh, um, and then it becomes confusing you know, after a few words, then the examiner, who knows what they're going to do with the next 30, 40 words, whatever. Uh, so basically, if you minimize it, uh, a little bit. Uh, so, if you reduce it a little bit to 15 to 25 words maximum, um, then uh, that's kind of minimizes the risk. Uh, try not to make very short sentences. I don't think normally, uh, you know, uh, uh, 10 word 10 word sentences or something are going to be very good, or five word sentences, or whatever. Uh, tip number 86. I was writing synonyms. So basically, make synonyms for the questions. So you don't want to repeat the uh, question uh, vocabulary. Um, so. Um, um, the, uh, from what I may have heard informally, um, is that if you use the, from someone probably claiming to be an arts examiner, is if you use their vocabulary, you will get no mark for that. Um, they just kind of skip to the next word. Uh, tip number 87, um, arts writing time. The the uh, task one is 20 minutes, the task two is 40 minutes. So um, think about how much time you need for planning and writing synonyms, etc. Uh, tip number 88, um, increase word complexity, so instead of using the word many, you could use the word numerous or something like that and uh, try to make it more impressive. Uh, tip number 89, um, uh, basically, uh, yes, uh, use um, uh, linking words, so basically you're linking sentences and uh, together and uh, within the sentence you can also link together, etc. So basically, uh, trying to make it more complex. Uh, tip number 90, make an Excel sheet of errors. So um, basically, you can put in your errors and count how many times you're repeating the uh, same ones, etc. Um, tip number 91. Um, <clears throat> right, excuse me, I was a little bit uh, disconnected. Uh, tip number 91. 
uh, for writing, uh, may, uh, read uh, model answers, and uh, then you can kind of get some tips from that. Uh, tip number 92, do regular practice of IELTS writing tasks, so, and then get corrections and so on. And uh, tip number 93, should I work on something I'm already right at? No, basically try to prioritize, so if you're good at something already, you don't need to keep on like learning the, the same thing, right? If you don't, and, and just focus on more on the weak areas, but make sure that you're maintaining the level if, uh, for the required amount also. Uh, tip number 94, should I write complex or basic sentences? It does depend on the grade, um, but um, um, so the priority is less. Um, so for lower grade, you may need, may need uh, uh, less, uh, less, uh, um, uh, uh, less uh, complex sentences. But uh, yes, it's good, you know, to to work on that. Uh, tip number 95, uh, spelling. Uh, if you're not sure. Um, the correct spelling of a word, uh, try to avoid it, uh, basically, um, and use something for equivalent level, if possible. Uh, tip number 96, start our writing tasks with the strongest word as possible, so try not to start an essay with the word the. I know a lot of the model answers may do, but obviously that's just very basic. Uh, tip number 97, uh, stationary. Uh, for the exam, you can have a pen, a pencil, and a razor. Uh, and also, and uh, of course, you'll need your ID. And uh, so basically, you can't bring in a dictionary or um, I think you may not even be able to bring in a clock. Uh, sorry, a, a watch. So you have to rely on their clock, uh, possibly. I've heard. It, it depends on how strict they are. You know, they may not do that, of course. Uh, tip number 88. I have a uh, text analyzer on my website where you can actually input uh, vocabulary and then check uh, the uh, vocabulary level. Uh, tip number uh, 99, under, uh, for writing, uh, understand the uh, understand the exam questions. So uh, for the general, there are different types of letters. And for the task two, there are uh, pie charts and graphs, etc. So try to understand that. And uh, then for the task two, there'll be things like uh, agree, disagree, etc. So become try to become familiar with that. Uh, tip number 100, uh, there are a lot of advice videos on the internet, so you can check those out and try to learn from those. Uh, tip number 101, uh, what are common errors for handwriting? You know, some people may like may make a C look like an E or anything like that. Uh, tip number 102, when I should I write numbers or letters? Uh, personally, I normally write uh, numbers for statistics, and then if you're saying, you know, there are three graphs, then I would write the word three. Um, in uh, that uh, situation. Uh, tip number 103, uh, make sure your word counts. You don't want to be particularly under. If you write too, too many words under, you may fail. And uh, if you write a lot of words over, it will take a lot of time and have less time for checking. So try to go like 175 for task 1 and 275 for task 2. It should be minimum 150 words for task 1 and minimum uh, 250 words for task 2. So try to be careful of that. Uh, tip number 104, uh, for writing, you can actually uh, make notes on the uh, question paper. Um, and, um, of course, uh, anything on the question paper will not uh, be graded. Um, okay, um, so that's that. And uh, let's uh, also see, maybe just go back to tip one. We've got a few minutes left, but I'll try to make at least 30 minutes. So uh, answer the test centers easier. Uh, in th uh, theoretically not, but in reality, some may not be professional or at least have some unprofessional examiners. So uh, try to maybe speak to your friends who've taken the exam there. Um, I heard one student, they took the exam in Saudi Arabia. They didn't do so well, one of my students. And then she went to, uh, I think, maybe the UAE, and then she passed. So basically, that can help. Um, tip number two, I have a IELTS uh, average uh, band calculator on my website where you can input results, uh, statistics to get uh, results to get the uh, uh, statistics. Uh, tip number three, food. Uh, remember that the IELTS exam may take up a lot of uh, energy, so basically, you know, have don't try not to have a heavy meal, but definitely you want to have uh, enough uh, calories before uh, studying. So make sure that uh, that is. Uh, you don't get to run out of energy basically in the middle of the exam. Um, tip number four, uh, can I get an IELTS regrade? Yes, you can get an, a, a regrade, but um, that will probably be only beneficial for the 
uh, writing and speaking, because for the reading and listening, uh, the you know it's it's, it's just uh, I think it may be actually checked by a computer or something. I'm not sure. Or one or one or both. And uh, so basically, they're unlikely. It's not it's not going to be a human error essentially or or anything like that. But uh, for writing and speaking, they I have heard it's been changed before. Um, so um, yes, yeah, so basically, um, you can um, check for that. Okay, um, and I'll do one more tip. Uh, tip number five: uh, what, check what you can bring. So to the exam center, you cannot bring correction fluid. You can only bring like a, a razor, uh, pencil, pen, uh, pretty much, um, and uh, ID, and also um, maybe some water. Uh, I'm not sure about sharpener, but just make sure your pen is sharpened, or you can get like a clicking pencil. Maybe I'm not sure exactly. The rules how, how they do that, but it, I can't imagine having an issue with the sharpener. Or certainly, if you put it in your pocket. Um, anyway, so don't uh, don't bring things that you're going to be uh, stopped. So you can't bring a dictionary, of course, or model answers or anything like that. Okay, uh, right. Uh, thank you very much, everyone. Uh, let's finish here. My name's Philip. I'm from OnlineEnglishTeacher.com. I'm a UK native speaker. I'm an art specialist. So I started teaching it uh, first about eight years ago. And I've been teaching many classes since then, um, part and full time, etc., or on and off. But anyway, I teach. Uh, I'm an art specialist, basically. I teach a lot, um, and I teach uh, paid Skype classes and arts writing correction e-courses. I have a private uh, support forum also, just for paying students, and uh, also a lot of free material, a free ebook and free forum, etc., where I post things sometimes like this free video. Okay, and also uh, please uh, try to like my. Um, business page. Um, so if you want to like to, if you want to like my business page, and then you can get updates as well. Um, put that there. Okay. Uh, thank you very much, everyone. And uh, my e my Skype ID is IELTS Online English Teacher. That's IELTS Online English Teacher. And uh, email is uh, onlineenglishteacher.com. I'll just put it in the um, Skype. Uh, sorry, in the uh, uh, group chat here. And uh, my website is onlineenglishteacher.com. Okay, uh, thank you very much, everyone. Have a fantastic day. Bye bye.